Hey everyone, I'm Skepta Khaleesi, and thanks for checking into Women of Science. Sorry I'm a little late this week, I've just been really busy, you know, like getting into college, that kind of thing. But anyway, today is International Women's Day, and to help celebrate, I'm going to be introducing all of you to the spectacular Sophie Germain. So, some backstory. Young Sophie was fascinated by the story of Archimedes' death, and this sparked her interest in mathematics. For those of you who aren't familiar, the story goes that Archimedes was so engrossed in his own calculations during the invasion of his city that he ignored the questioning of a Roman soldier. So, Sophie figured that whatever he'd been studying must have been pretty interesting, so she decided to take a look for herself. See, Sophie had a revolution of her own going on. You may have heard of it, a little thing called the French Revolution. And so she had plenty of time to sit around inside where it was safe. She used that time to read every book on mathematics of her father's that she could find. And she even taught herself Latin and Greek so that she could study the works of Newton and Euler. Pretty smart kid. Unfortunately, this did present a problem. Do you remember how in the early Harry Potter books, the Dursleys would lock up Harry's textbooks in the cupboard under the stairs so that he wouldn't be able to study magic? Well, yeah, pretty much the same thing. Sophie's parents thought that math and women went together like Severus Snape and shampoo. I'm not kidding. These people took away her warm clothes and forbade her to start a fire so that it'd be too cold and dark for her to study mathematics in secret at night. Wow. But this was a young lady not to be discouraged, and eventually her parents relented, especially her mom. Then, when Sophie was 18, the École Polytechnique opened in Paris. Even though Sophie couldn't actually attend because of the whole, you know, woman thing, she was able to get her hands on some of the lecture notes. She learned enough to start writing her own work, which she submitted for a review under a male pseudonym. The professor who read it, Joseph Lagrange, was so impressed that he sought out the author and eventually became her mentor. So Sophie was primarily interested in number theory, and this led to her correspondence with one Carl Frederick Gauss. They exchanged ideas for years before Gauss discovered that she was, in fact, a woman. But upon learning this, he declared that, quote, a taste for the abstract sciences in general, and above all the mysteries of numbers, is excessively rare. But when a person of the sex which, according to our customs and prejudices, must encounter infinitely more difficulties than men to familiarize herself with these thorny researches, succeeds nevertheless in surmounting these obstacles and penetrating the most obscure parts of them, then without a doubt she must have the noblest courage, quite extraordinary talents, and superior genius. So, Sophie is most well known for her work relating to Fermat's last theorem. She helped prove that the theorem held for primes less than 100 under certain conditions, and these primes are now known as Sophie Germain primes. To put this in some context, until 1995, the theorem was in the Guinness Book of World Records as one of the most difficult math problems in the world. Sophie was also interested in elasticity, and she worked as a physicist studying the theory. In 1816, she wrote a paper titled Memoirs on the Vibrations of Elastic Plates, for which she won a contest hosted by the French Academy of Sciences. And she is recognized today as an important contributor to the field of elastic theory. All in all, Sophie studied number theory, practical mathematics, and she contributed to the fields of elasticity and acoustics. Also, Sophie's earlier correspondence with Gauss led him to urge the University of Göttingen to award Sophie an honorary degree. Unfortunately, she died before this could happen at the age of 55 from breast cancer, but she was awarded an honorary degree six years after her death. Sophie has also been honored with the naming of the Sophie Germain Primes and the Germain Curvature, and she also has a school and a street named after her as well as the Grand Prix Sophie Germain at the Academy of Sciences. Okay, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to come back next week for a brand new Women of Science. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button.